Asking guests to pay for things at your Italian wedding can get a little bit political and messy. So I'm here to break down the things that I think you can ask your guests to pay for. Ciao, I'm Lucy. I'm an Italian wedding planner and the founder of La Lista. Each week I'm here to provide Italian wedding planning wisdom and help you on your journey. If you haven't already, please just hit subscribe below and help us reach as many couples as possible. So here we go. What can you ask your guests to pay for with your wedding? It's a strange and uncomfortable subject. Now, all of this is completely up for grabs and different couples obviously have different budgets and different things that they feel appropriate to ask. Here are some of the ideas that I have as to what is normal and what you could ask for. The first thing is accommodation at your venue. The huge benefit of an Italian wedding is that you often book a venue that you can have for a few nights with multiple accommodation. You could, for example, have 60 people staying at your venue and charge them X amount per night. And that could almost mean that you don't actually end up with a venue cost. One challenge is to work out what you can fairly charge your guests. I always advise that you should look at what's local in the area. So if they were to go and stay in a hotel down the road, what would that cost? And can you get your venue cost that you will charge them as close to that as possible? Obviously, they have the benefit of being at the venue. It's likely to be a beautiful place to be, really nice standard of accommodation. And that could mean that you could actually charge them a tiny bit more than just the local base price. It's really normal for couples to charge their guests to stay at accommodation. I'd say about 80% of couples do this. The complication can come in where you have to actually communicate this to your guests and also get the money in because venues will want you to pay them directly in one go. This is just about good communication, being really clear from the start that you've got accommodation held for them, how much this costs and giving them the option to pay for it. Also communicating very clearly what the deadlines are for them to pay you and how to do this. The second thing that you can charge guests for is their transport. So this falls into a few categories. Maybe your guests will want some transport to get from the airport to their accommodation or your wedding venue. You could help them arrange this. Potentially you've got a planner that can organize all of this transport for you. It can be quite costly, but it definitely offers a cost saving to guests if you do this all together. So if you've got some guests that are on the same flight, if you organise a bus or a taxi for them together, it's going to be something like 30 to 50 euro per person. That's definitely less than hiring a car and it's definitely less than organising it themselves. So you could just see yourselves as someone that's organising it for them. You may have to pay for this yourselves, again, because of the way that it works in Italy and how companies want to be paid, but your guests can pay you back for that. Other transport that tends to happen is obviously getting to the wedding events and the wedding day. Now, nine times out of 10, the couples pay for this. Obviously, you're getting your guests to Italy, you want them to come to those events. They're probably staying at accommodation that could be a little bit out of the way. So helping them get there is crucial to the success of the event, but also it definitely helps make them calmer. And I've said it many times, but your guests' experience really affects the vibe of your wedding. So if they've struggled to get to your wedding, if they haven't had transport, they've had to find their own way, or they have to drive and they can't drink, that can all affect the mood of the day. Having this transport is number one, is key, and providing it for them is a nice thing to do. If your budget doesn't allow, I think it's totally acceptable to see this again as like a pre-arranged taxi for them. If you're going to a wedding in England or in your home country, you would probably arrange a taxi yourself. You'd probably also arrange a hotel, to be honest. But if you're arranging a taxi yourself, you're going to expect to pay 10, 20 pounds for a taxi. So asking for a contribution, it may not cover the full cost of the transport, but if it helps you a little bit, then that's totally okay to ask. With all of this, again, just a reminder that it's really important to communicate this as early as you possibly can. If you've got a wedding website that you set up early on, just having it on there that you will provide transport, but that you would ask for a contribution of £10 is really important so that guests right from the start know what they're expecting and that you know you're going to get that income. So the third thing you might do is have other activities for guests. So sometimes people organise wine tastings or other meals at the wedding venue, for example. It's not completely normal to cover all of those things. Sometimes people do, sometimes people don't. With something like a wine tasting or a cooking class, that can be an optional event. You could communicate the price of that and ask guests if they want to take part. And often you can pay for those things in cash on the day. So guests can literally just pay for their participation in that. 
If you are staying at a big venue with lots of people, you may have catered meals, you may have booked extra services, you may do a food shop to stock the fridges. All of these things fall into things that you might want to split with your guests. I would personally work out a calculation for this and factor it in to the total amount that you're charging your guests to stay there for the accommodation. You could organise what meals and things you're going to have every single night, what the cost of those would be, and put that all into that big sum that you're going to charge them for their three nights there. So that again, from the start, it's really clear, you know that everyone's covered and it doesn't start to get complicated when you add things in later down the line and you need to ask people for other little bits of money. I think that's where it gets confusing. Final thing is the bar. Now, personally, I don't think that there should be a cash bar at an Italian wedding. A, catering find this really hard to deliver, so not many caterers will actually do cash bars. But B, I think the wedding day, your guests have travelled all that way, they've paid for various things. Offering them drinks through the night is an absolute must. If you consider this, or you really need to find money another way, I'd really think about other areas of the budget that you've spent on and see if you can bring money back in other ways. Bar is an area that I just wouldn't touch. So that's it. They are the key areas that I think you can charge guests back for when you are planning your Italian wedding. As I said at the start, it's completely up to you what you do. Everyone's budget is completely different. If you've got any comments, any other areas you can think of or any feedback for us, we'd love to see it in the comments below. Please let us know. And don't forget, my mission is to help as many people as possible. So please like, subscribe and share this video. And remember that I'm always cheering you on in your Italian wedding planning. I'll see you next week. Thank you.